Hi, I'm Paul Roberts, and this is Conscious Counseling 101. Talking about a 45-year-old friendship and how we relate to one another and capping it all off on our last week together before we part, never to be living in the same area again. What can I say that hasn't already been said? I know. So, this is my last time having lunch with my friend before he moves to Nashville. I want to talk about challenging that a person can do to someone and what you can benefit from it if you are wise and focused on growth and conscious development. So my friend, regardless whether he gives me tidbits of wisdom or chides me or tries to tear me down or shows his confusion or gives me his points of view with misnomers or even strengths in them doesn't matter doesn't matter at all if you're conscious and you're wise enough to see I benefit and gain by anything that I receive from my friend if he's in a bad mood and he tries to tear me down or maybe we just don't understand about a conversation that we're talking about what we're talking about out on a given day, does not going as well as it could. I may be confused at that moment and I may not respond uh, very well, but I can make a gain out of it even if it seems negative at the time because I get fodder to work with and analyze. And then when the analysis is done, I've made a gain from that work. Thinking is work. Thinking is work. That old, often misquoted quote. I'm thinking right now, don't bother me with the facts. That's a misquote. The way it's meant to be said is, I'm thinking, don't bother me with facts. Leave the the out. When you say the, it gives it the idea that the facts are, are ruling. They're important somehow. It's like they're anchored down and you really need to consider them or you can't think. It's like intelligence is the way that a person can utilize knowledge or a wise person can utilize intelligence. When we call it the facts, it seems as though we're disregarding it, but it isn't the facts, it's facts. So in other words, when we're thinking, we're on a higher level tangent. We don't want facts because facts are a lower level tangent. So at the time when I'm relating with my friend, if it's a good day or a bad day or whatever, it doesn't matter. If he presents a plethora of facts, if, if I take some things as jabs, uh, if I don't understand something, it doesn't matter. Because when the analysis is done, all the content data is no longer facts or anything that I might have initially perceived it as. It's all gifts for the person with thoughtfulness and thinking power wisdom and intelligence to sort out, unpack, and utilize to promote conscious growth and better understanding than he had before he had the encounter. Every day of every person's life and everything they encounter, no matter how they perceive it as good, bad, ugly, or anything else, can be utilized for this good purpose that I'm sharing with you now. So as I finish up 45 years with my friend and he moves to Nashville, He's, I think, happier now because the house is looking like it's sold and his storage shed is looking like it's going to be able to hold the rest of his stuff. And they got a good price because the houses are up right now. And his brother's excited to look for houses with him in Nashville. And things are coming together. He seems to be a little bit more on top of his game. And he doesn't seem to be lashing out at me because of my faith and putting my ideas in something that he can't understand and trying to rescue me. We don't have time for that. We don't have time to be helping one another anymore. Everything I needed to know I learned in kindergarten and everything Eric and I could ever amount to together has already happened. So I'll take and may unpack some of the things, the blessings and gifts that we've had and the curses and conundrums and enigmas that we might still have left behind. And it might take years to continue to have its effects swell and blossom up in our lives. 
I can't speak for how he deals with it, but I know that it'll be that way for me. But I've realized something in the last few months of talking with him and having him come down on me in the ways that he will, for better or for worse, and that is that because of our friendship, I've had the ease of heart and mind and soul and greased lips to speak more frequently and often because that's what friends do. Consequently, my words might not have been as well poised to have their maximum effect as they might have been if I had spoke less and thought more. I just said, this is my friend. We can be however, this or that. There's so many pathways. If I go this path, I'll have certain obstacles on it. If I go this path, I'll have certain obstacles. If we spoke less and didn't work through as many things, maybe we'd have thought, boy, there isn't very much content there. I don't know. So what we did was we talked a lot. And in 45 years, he has not been able to convince me to not be concerned about anything because the universe wants nothing of me. And I have not been able to convince him that there's a possibility that the universe wants something of him. Of course I can't convince him. I'm not convinced myself. It's a faith issue. So that's where it lies. That's where we leave it. We don't go any further. It can't go any farther. It's just all there is to it. <laughs> so that's the end of that with the Eric saga in my life other than the lingering effects. I will not be following him this time, as I did from Florida to California. Uh, under no circumstances that I could possibly predict would I ever live in Nashville. I don't like country music. <laughs> or at least I don't stand on it. Uh, there's a lot of other things there besides country music. There's mountains, there's greenery, there's rain. Oh yes, I'd like to have some rain over here more. Uh, but I won't be following him over there. But he is close enough to Atlanta and Tennessee which I do go to sometimes, then I'll be able to see him. And he'll come here to visit his brother and go to some various conventions and shows. And of course, he can stay with us. And that'll be our life. He'll continue to be him. I'll continue to be me. But change is a valuable thing. And so even though I continue to be me, I will want there to be a growth on a daily basis. I'll want there to be a change on a daily basis. I can't speak for what he wants, but he's spoken for himself, and he has told me that he wants everything that comes to him to approach him as a sense of wonder of a 12-year-old boy would have. That's fine, but there is so much more management and discipline needs that a person has to have besides just having that. Maybe he was just trying to summarize it all in that one little way, but the truth is, a person that does not master the self will be mastered by others. I like to think that he'll master the self and have the disciplines he needs and still find a way to have a sense of wonder, but somehow I doubt it. Because the sense of wonder is almost like something like magic or myth. We don't understand it and it fascinates us. And that's why we wonder about it and are amazed. As soon as we lock down all our thoughts and become a little bit more aware of not what we know, but what can't be known, we also become aware of what could be, even if we don't know it, and therefore our fascination wanes because the fathoming of the infinite becomes a part of our basic toolkit that we use. And even though we can't know that which we fathom, the fathoming is so large that something that comes along from someone that isn't practicing thinking and fathoming and heightened conscious growth is most likely going to fall short. And so therefore, because of what we're doing with our fathoming, with our thinking, with our conscious growth, and the fact that many others that might offer us something aren't, the chances are the fascination will never suit us. It'll always be less. And if it stays high, Regardless of my, I don't want to say I don't trust my friend, but if it stays high, all I can say is, based on my point of view, there are other disciplines and things that he's not incorporating in his mentality. And that's what is required in order for him to have that endless 12-year-old boy fascination. 
So it's almost like he's fashioned a crippling effect for himself in order to make sure he can continue to perceive with those views. So without getting into religion, without getting into lack of trust, we're going to use points of view of studied psychology and philosophy to try to ascertain what's going on there in a mind that has to be fascinated and wants to remain able to be fascinated. Okay, that's enough about Eric. So, I started out talking about me and how I grow, no matter how we relate, because he's a person that's been put in my life with blessing. Now, why is the blessing there? Because I learn and grow from it and have camaraderie along the way as I go. But, it wouldn't be a blessing if he had flaws and misnomers that I absorbed. If I absorbed everything that he had to offer that wasn't positive, and I didn't look for heightened conscious as he offered things, I wouldn't grow past those things and leave anything that wasn't useful. Like Bruce Lee says, be like the nature of water. And this is the recipe for the heightened conscious, by the way, or the intelligence. Examine all things, disregard what can be disregarded, don't feel like you have to hold on to something in that disregarding, but remember it was there. But only uh, apply yourself to the things that are positive and can can be seen as a thing that can can bring you to the next level or cause change or cause growth. And don't be hampered by things that do the opposite. So these are the ways that I talk about myself. And this isn't just with Eric, this is with anybody. If you're my friend, my child, my wife, uh, somebody I see on the street, I'm going to learn and gain and benefit from you no matter what your intent is for me. It just can't be stopped because that is what my consciousness does. That's how my mentality is set up. So there may be times when I'm lower or stalled or contemplating or thinking or doing some work and not having breakthroughs, but rest assured during those times, the wheels are turning with fervor. Even in my most down, lonely moments, my most perplexed moments, this is who I am. And the thoughts that you retain and hold with you and work on are what you eventually become as a man thinketh so he becomes. I will never totally understand what Eric was trying to relate to me. He might have just been trying to say, don't overthink things. Have fascination and wonder. Where's the litmus test on what overthinking is? I don't know. But I'm not going to judge him for it. I'll take his word at it that his fascination and wonder brings him joy worthy that any other suffering that I might watch him go through would take away from and with that being said, I will say, I'm Paul Roberts, this is Conscious Counseling 101, and it's been a tremendous 45 years.